Danger is an active ingredient in the life of a professional race car driver, where life or death can come at any time, where skill is often the deciding factor. Now what you are about to see is an example of such skill, where at Riverside, this fellow completes a successful 360 and stays on the track. But others can't quite pull it off, like this racer who tries and loses it into the dirt, rolling up the hill to his waiting admirers. Or this driver who spins off the track into a solid wall of hay bales, proving the point that yes, you can drive through hay on your way to the track, but only if you wave to the crowd while doing it. High-speed left-hand turns can also be a problem, because if you spin out, your next stop is the wall. This is what's known as kissing the wall. Then there are the walls which eat race cars, such as here, where two track officials have front row seats. The start of a kart race, here again at Riverside, is always a crucial time for each driver to collect his thoughts and jockey for the perfect position in the track, especially in the last 500 yards before the green flag. As each driver puts the pedal to the metal, it's a free-for-all, at least until the first turn. Shooting around this quick left-right-hander looks easier than it is, and at this speed, the leaders and the followers seem to pick the right line. But coming off a straight, everyone is nearly flying around turn number nine at Riverside, using the entire width of the track and getting as close to the wall as possible to maintain speed. Everyone makes the corner. Well, almost everyone. Cruising at high speeds makes high temperatures and hot oil. Break a hose, crack a block, or lose a crucial bolt, and hot oil on a hot oil pan can be hazardous to your health. This driver must first breathe black smoke from his burning engine, then white smoke from the fire extinguisher. But he appears all right once the fire is under control. another casualty of backwards driving. The start of this race begins innocently enough and no one nudges each other. For the moment, no one's running over each other, around or through the pack in their desire to get to the front of the pack. This driver is a member of the 360 degree club. And then there are the drivers, like Johnny Rutherford in car number three, who'd rather park on the track and watch. Here's what happens when two drivers, Steve Holzmere in car number 66 and Gordon Johncock in car 20, fight for the inside line where there's only room for one. As other drivers pass in single file, the track crew works feverishly to clear the way. For sale, one race car, Slightly used, $500 or best offer. In a cluster of cars down this straight, one driver's mistake could cause a chain reaction crash. But he breaks in time to keep the race crashless. For now, car number 85 swings both ways before dropping out. His backwards driving while in gear has started a fire. 
And as an extra bonus, his car seems to be stuck in reverse. The wall, if used properly, can be a racer's friend. But for Jerry Grant, the wall has proved an enemy. And here, the wall gets in the way again forcing a disastrous 360 degree, resulting in a wheel in search of the driver. Into the turn at Ontario, John Mailer and Jerry Grant get just a little too close for comfort. Car number 48 locks the brakes and spins completely around before smacking its nose into the wall. In slow motion, if you look closely, you'll see the car directly behind 48 just barely miss a head-on collision. But fortunately, he does miss, and number 48 high sides along the wall, safely out of the center of the track before he drops onto the shoulder. At such high speeds, even the tiniest reaction can become a driver's undoing. Just a bit too fast around the corner and that's it. Another slightly used race car. But this IndyCar racer, now on its way back to the garage, will receive plenty of attention by a host of top mechanics and will no doubt see yet another day at the racetrack. Long Beach Grand Prix President Christopher Pope used to gaze at the Pacific and imagine it was the French Riviera. His dream was to create a world-renowned track in Long Beach worthy of the Grand Prix circuit. So he acquired the services of Grand Prix great Dan Gurney to lay out a course along the streets of Long Beach. Gurney designed a 12-turn, 2.2-mile circuit that gave the participants a twisting test of horsepower and gearing. From the start, at Ocean Boulevard, around the curves of Linden Avenue, and onto the long, fast sweeper of Shoreline Drive, back up to Ocean via the zigzagging Pine Avenue, the track ranged from 190 miles per hour in the straight to 40 miles per hour in the corners. Long Beach was a gear shifter's paradise. For the first time in 1978, in downtown Long Beach, the throbbing roar of high-performance engines echoed for miles around. But out on the track, drivers from all over the world were competing on a very tricky and unforgiving circuit, which had several surprises in store. Such as here where Hans Stock in Car 16 literally runs up the backside of another racer early on in the race. The Long Beach Grand Prix stands unrivaled as a test of skill, courage, and of course, reflexes. It's very easy to lose control in the corners after the sweeping, nearly mile-long straight. Sometimes, you can't help but slip. And when you're fighting for the inside line, sometimes you'll resort to anything as proven by Carlos Rootman on the inside, who has spun and is facing the track, and Patrick Tombay, who has gotten stuck on the outside and is facing the wall with really no place to go. Rootman who had won 22 races that year, checks briefly for damage and makes a break for it.
Long Beach has a reputation of being extremely challenging because of the demanding track and the small distances between the cars at high speed, anything can happen. Such as here, the beginning of the 1979 Long Beach Grand Prix, trouble in the cramped driving conditions, especially in the first lap, is worse than driving in rush hour traffic. More trouble when Nicky Lauda in the Parmalade car slams into the rear of two other cars, launching it completely over one car which manages to escape without harm. The one fear of all mechanics, track officials and of course the drivers is fire. Even when the most extreme precautions are taken, no one can know when fire will strike. Like here, when Rene Arnault's engine bursts into flames. Even if you do grab the inside, there's no guarantee you'll make it round the corner, demonstrated here by Carlos Rutman in number two in the Black Martini Lotus. And while driver's skills are important, a fast and competent pit crew is vital to success. Here, Jean-Pierre Gerrier almost smacks Jody Schechter in the red Ferrari. But Schechter manages to stay in a lower gear and passes Gerrier from the outside. Racing at Long Beach is not all fun and games, but when the checkered flag falls, it's just a matter of time before the champagne begins to flow. As the train of cars streams into the straight, Nelson Piquet is in the lead in the first lap and traffic conditions force American Mario Andretti into the air, which leaves Ricardo Zunino right into the wall. He's not injured, but his race has ended in the very first lap. each other when there is hardly any passing lanes. Drivers around the world have different ideas. Some stay on an inside line through each turn, while others are forced to the outside, such as here, where car number 27, Alan Jones, shows that he'll make it around this corner no matter what it takes. But Jones is not finished yet, as he rear-ends Alfa Romeo driver Bruno Giacomelli, who is surprised but regains his position and speeds away. Jones, with a little push from a track official, gets back on the track. Here, in 1981 at Long Beach, while most of the drivers had little difficulty negotiating the twisting track, some drivers just couldn't hang on.
Nev in car number 27 slams on the brakes and spins out of control. Fortunately, no one is near enough to collide with Villeneuve and cause more damage. And here is a perfect example of how to pass two cars using the inside lane. Formula One racing is both a physical and mental challenge. It takes enormous amounts of concentration just to make it around the track. But here, Keke Rosenberg in car number six concentrates so hard he forgets to turn with the others and follow his own path. At Long Beach, the multitude of hairpin corners can frustrate even the most experienced drivers. The tight cornering required of both the cars and drivers definitely take their toll. Here's a common situation at Long Beach. Just as Gilles Villeneuve on the outside in car 27 attempts to negotiate a sharp hairpin, Nelson Piquet has his eye on what little track is remaining and can't help but run through car 27, which bounces and spins 180 degrees on two wheels before coming to rest facing the opposite direction. Especially at the start of a Formula One race, the traffic situation can get quickly out of control. Even on the straight, when everything seems to be going along just fine, something unexpected happens. is rudely struck by a determined passerby. But that's what happens in international competition. With ongoing regularity, with cars and teams costing millions of dollars and professional race drivers going all out to win, this is one very exciting form of racing. Endless collisions, crashes and crack-ups are part of the game until the very end of each Formula One Grand Prix race. Such is the nature of the battle. With no quarter asked and no quarter given, every racer knows that only the best man will win. Ascot Speedway, Gardena, home of the notorious Demolition Derby, was one of the first ever stock car racing tracks. Drivers raced every week with their dreams of victory being broken over and over again by incredible near misses and hair-raising accidents. when stock car racing had just begun, there were no definite categories for the different types of cars, which caused major mishaps.
More than 10 years passed before the sport became popular and strict limitations were imposed upon the drivers and their machines. Getting used to the new rules was easy for some and not so easy for others. The heavier stocks, spectacular as they were, differentiated from the more sophisticated modified. Although the new modified were much safer, they still contributed their share of excitement. around the track. Bursting into flames. And even losing their wheels were everyday occurrences for the modified stock drivers. and car 92 loses control, causing a devastating crash. Back to Riverside. Jim Hurtabees with his blue number 75 racer slams into the wall. Bob Bondurant, learning from his mistakes on his way to become one of America's best race driving teachers. dust while he acrobatically rolls over. Richard Petty, with his Plymouth, loses it once and gets lucky, but Lady Luck is not with him this time. Ken Mills. This time he has escaped injury, but his car has been completely destroyed. Danny Weinberg up the wall and down on his wheels. Melwin Porter in car number five doesn't make this turn and goes for the sky. Grimacing with pain, he slowly exits the demolished car. Replayed in slow motion, this crash appears even more terrifying as Porter tries to negotiate the turn at too high a speed, brakes, loses control and sends the car airborne, which shatters on impact.